you're paying or you're leaving. We're not tolerating not having a sponsor. We're not tolerating not having a home group. We're not tolerating not having a church. You will all be going to meetings. If you don't want to do that, start preparing now to move out. Because you're going to be evicted. Tom's um, done putting up with this shit. Tom's done putting up with this shit. Um, that's why he's not here. And that's why he told me to read this with you guys. And we'll probably read it again Sunday since people don't realize this is a mandatory fucking meeting. <coughs> All right. We got alumni here. Nick, I'm back. Where are you taking house? I was in the Yale house since Friday, 7.15. I'm Paul Alcoholic. Paul. Oh. Uh, I was in the Bedford House. My sobriety date is July 30th, 2018. Okay. Yeah. I have a plaque for Paul. Um, Paul was the first move I did when I took over at this job. Um, I moved in a lot of people and I seen a lot of people fail. He was the first one I saw move in and the first one I saw move out successfully. Um, he, yeah, he struggled the first most of us do, but he fell in line. Um, he's done everything that was asked of him, and that's why. He, He's alumni now, that's why he's successful now. I still see him at pay today every fucking morning. He's not at the houses. He's been through these houses, he built better behaviors, and when he got out, they're fucking happy. He has a chance of staying sober because he did what was in this contract. Um, Paul, I'm super proud of you, man. Thanks for showing up. Yeah, my name is Paul. I'm an alcoholic. Oh. Uh, pretty much, I when I called Jonathan, uh, that's been about four months ago now, uh, I was in a bad way. I was living in a bad place and stuff, and I knew I needed to. I was already going to meetings, but I finally had a couple weeks sober. And I, he says, well, when do you want to move in? I said, well, as soon as possible. And he got me in the house the next day. And when I got there, I was ready to be out. I, uh, I was nervous, you know, I was 64 years old, and the bottom line is I needed to uh, grow the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> but there's more to it than that. I mean, uh, uh, there was, there was, you know, I had my share of problems and everything, not just in the house, but all around. But I did get a sponsor, and I did uh, go, I do go to meetings, and I'm really involved in AA now. I've got a commitment to make the coffee start and December and stuff, but there's two important things. In the past, I've been in and out of AA for many years. I've been in and out of court rooms for many years in California. And uh, my first thing was, yeah, I, even though I'm retired, I, I went to work. I got to work. I got to make money. Well, I blew my arm out completely. I had to get a complete shoulder replacement. So I couldn't work, obviously. So that would have, I'm not so sure had I been going to work and this wouldn't have happened. Had I put so much into the program that it worked out for the best. Because I couldn't do what I've done so many times in the past, which is worry about money. I mean, you have to worry about money to a certain point, but you can't put it before the sobriety. And uh, I'm not, I know it's not easy, and, uh, and it's not easy now, but uh, I'm just committed, and I just, uh, I got both feet in AA deep, and it doesn't matter whether it's NA or AA. And I met some good people, and uh, I got a really thorough sponsor. I'm uh, thought I was done with the four step, but I'm not. So, uh, but anyways, uh, I just remember the shape I was in four months ago when I when I came in, and it's a combination of things. I mean, it's I'm not saying it's hard of this to save my life, or you know, by any means I'm sure, but it's uh, to me it's just like uh, I the things are some things that came back which I thought I wouldn't come back. My family still doesn't trust me, and I don't expect them to, you know. But I've been of service to my granddaughters, grandsons, been able to pick them up from school, you know, and do things like that that I wouldn't have never got been able to do with my own kids, you know. So, uh, like Jonathan said one time a long time ago, you know, time is running out, you know, especially 
I'm 64 years old, you know. Nobody on my dad's side of the family, including my grandpa, lived past 70, so that means I'm lucky. If I got five more years, and I sure don't want to spend them either behind bars or still drunk out there. God only knows, you know, what could happen. And I feel good. I, you know what I mean? I, uh, it's a, just like a steady diet. You can't eat good once a week and expect your body to say, okay, you're good. You know, don't worry about it. But it's the same thing with the program, you know. And uh, I used to fight it all the time, man. I, I'd meet guys from AA and, and they lived and some guys even had the NA and stuff tattooed on their arms. And I thought, I, you know, I want to stay sober, but I'm not going to, you know, give my whole life to AA and stuff. And you don't have to, you know. The things that you, that you lost, that I lost, some of them have come back and I'm happy. I'm happy with what I'm doing and I'm going to keep doing it, you know. And uh, a couple times, uh, for my sponsor, if I don't call him, he calls me, so... <laughs> It's, uh, but having a sponsor makes a big difference. And I've done it before, and I got a sponsor that I knew I could pretty much uh, snowball and do, still do things my way, but I don't this time. And, uh, so with that, I'll pass, and uh, I just uh, hope I can uh, leave you with my story. I can help somebody else, but especially if you're younger. You can, uh, when you get to be 64, you might not be sitting in a room like this. You might be sitting in a room tired, not having to work, and enjoying the hell out of life. Still going to be, but uh, thanks everybody. Uh, it's been a part of my recovery. Hey, he has something to say. Oh, what's up, Marcus? Uh, Marcus. Uh, Marcus. People don't know me. I, uh, but God talks to me, and like a few days ago, He told me to do DMT and drink so I did some DMT and I drank and then uh, and then today he told me to come here and say it in front of this so I just do what I'm told that's it so I don't know what the purpose is I don't care what the purpose is I'm just doing what I'm told okay
You know what I mean? Like, no one in here does it perfect, and like, you know, we can take advantage of, you know, well, we know they need you to, to work with us to do this, but like, <coughs> to place by cutting corners just didn't fucking work to me anymore. And it's, it's just a lot easier to not have to look over my fucking shoulder every, every minute and wonder what fucking why I told this person or that person. It's just like to live that life of, not that I do it perfect by any means, but like to live a life where I fucking just, Tonight too, yeah, I'll fucking share my experience and whatever that's worth. Um, but I, I come here because like three weeks ago, my girlfriend and I went to uh, an ultrasound. And she was like three months pregnant. We went to the ultrasound, all, all fucking pumped up and excited, and, and there was no heartbeat on the, on the monitor. Mm -hmm. and, and so the last three weeks have been really fucking hell. Just um, but you know, I'm finding out like my recovery. Like yeah, when you get out of sober living, like. My issues today aren't like my house manager fucking on my ass or cleaning my room or fucking whatever. Like my issues are uh, a little bit different, but it's still the same. Like I still do, I still call my sponsor. You know, it's still the same method that I used in here. And to learn that like the coolest thing about my recovery is it's not fucking about, it's not really about me anymore. Uh, my head will tell me that my life's all about me, but to, to be able to be here with my girlfriend last like three weeks and um, not even have to like say anything but this program has taught me to, to just be able to show up for fucking people. To be able to reach out when people are, are struggling or I have no magic words to tell her. She's broken beyond belief uh, on a fucking roller coaster ride with me. All I can do is just be there, right? Like other people were there for me when I was in jail. So um, you know I come here today because like I'm You guys are doing the deal in here, and you want to be any fucking way else. Like, that's powerful to me because when I sat in this fucking room, I thought all the other places I could fucking be. And that's all you guys are here doing. You don't want to fucking do what you're doing anyway. So,
have said things like, when I go to the bathroom, I'm going to the guest bathroom. And some days it's been the guest bathroom, but I have my own bathroom. <laughs> but it's just been that long, and I'm constantly doing that stuff. You know, and then I wait for uh, taking a shower. I'm reaching for my closet to go get my shower. So I wait for a woman to come by. You know, like I don't. It's just, but the, it's those things that you constantly do to get those, you know, to get those good habits. Those habits are formed, and then it's just the automatic. Same problem, you know, and the same idea. You know, when you just stop, you should do that. It doesn't stop. You just keep going on, going on. You know what I mean? And then it's, uh, you know, I think the same amount of land that I go get is like the equal amount of work that I go get. You know, it's the same. Sit your house beat down and say, hey, I'm having this problem. So I'm not going to work for me numerous amounts of time because I have this problem all the time. And then, you know, the people get fucked and tired of listening to you. It's like, okay, well, you know, I'm saying that, but yeah, you got to get off your chest. There's things inside that can go. That's the number one deal. Said, I mean, I had four months clean, but uh, went on a little run, uh, relapsed. Now I'm back. Um, I guess a good topic would be what are you doing to prevent relapse from happening? Um, I mean, I know we talk about it a lot and things like that, but uh, it happens so quickly, and there's a relapse before the relapse, like the thought that comes into your mind that uh, gets you going. That, that, you, you just put it aside and like, oh, one day I'll be able to do this again. Or one day I'll be able to smoke weed. Or one day I'll be able to, you know, drink one beer with my friends and it'll be okay. But um, it's recognizing that even that one that one time is going to end up taking you out. And I, I mean, like, it was right in front of me and, and I was like, fuck, well, it's just one time. I'm feeling pretty tired. I need to wake up. So I'll just smoke a little bit. And then next thing you know, I'm like, let's go to the dope man and get some more. You know, so um, I guess recognizing the, the things that, that uh, lead you to a relapse before the relapse would be a good topic. <coughs> uh, let's see. Why not? It's totally weird. It's pretty unmet, man. Excuse me. You want me? Yep. You're off. <coughs> Well, what I learned about the past four years when I was incarcerated was everything that you do, you have a choice. It's a decision. So, like, you read that in perspective of it. It's a choice. I mean, it's accept, it really comes down to it's that simple. You either choose to do something or you choose not to do something. You can sit there and make excuses. For reasons why to do a drug or drink or whatever, whatever you know, these, these drug choices or, or whatever it is to do, even if it's gambling or any other thing, it's it's a choice. And when mainly the reason why you're doing making that choice, there's usually a reason behind it. So 
don't don't just do drink or do your drug or, or relapse because you're trying to cover up some problem. Because the problem's still gonna be there. You're actually gonna make the problem worse. And then I don't even want to hurt yourself being in drug abuse or whatever else you're doing. But that's that's all I got with this. So. Yeah. So, is the topic what I'm doing to prevent a relapse or signs leading up to a relapse? Both. Both? Okay. Um, so, I guess let me expound on um, things that lead up to a relapse for me. Um, when I'm in recovery, when my life is going right, I have a very regimented life. I wake up at a certain time, I have a very like procedural morning routine, um, I work out consistently. You know, I make sure to call somebody that's in my support network, be it you know, my mom and dad, my sponsor, my girlfriend, my friends, whatever. Um, when I start to ease up on my standards, like when I wake up and go, oh, I'm in a rush, I don't need to make my bed. Um, or like, you know, uh, I've been eating good all week, I'll fucking just grab some Domino's. Um, when I slowly start to do those things more and more, and it gets to a point where like I'm putting my fucking shirt on backwards, I'm not working out at all, I'm beating off like four times a day, I'm listening to like, you know, shitty old music, 